Welcome the attendees, Grand Marshal, and elected officials to the memorial service at the GER Veterans Circle. Would you all please stand at attention for the national anthem performed by the Kenton High School Band. The invocation will be by the Reverend Randall Forrester. Before I pray, I just want to say thank you to our veterans who are in attendance today. We know that you left much behind to serve us. We're proud of your service, but we're here to remember those who have gone on before us, who paid the ultimate sacrifice. So let us pray. Oh Lord God, creator of all that is, by your benevolence you've been due to all people a 
nature that is called to be free. Lord God, we thank you for the founders of this nation who decided that all men should be created equal and treated as such. And through our history, it has taken us steps and missteps to get to that point. We pray that we would continue to labor and build upon the foundation that has been granted unto us through your divine hand and through those who have gone before us. Today, we remember those that we have called upon as a nation to defend our freedoms, to defend our borders, to fight against tyranny in all of its forms. For those who have laid down their lives, O oh God, we pray that they would have a blessed rest in you, that we would honor their sacrifice, that we would soldier on and march forward into a brighter new tomorrow, that we would not abuse the freedom given to us, but that we would see that we are called upon to sacrifice for the greater good in our daily lives. May we live with humility and grace. May we honor those who have served among us. And may we grant them their due reward for their service to their nation and to their fellow man. Oh, Father, we do pray for your protection upon our nation, a blessing upon this land. May America always be free and true to the ideals they've been given. May we honor the blood that has been shed. And may we continue to labor until peace comes. We pray all this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The reading of the Gettysburg Address will be by JORTC Cadet Sergeant Major Emma Ramsey. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a, na a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the, pro the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to de dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who have gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what we did, what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather to be dedicated here to unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us. From that, these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave us the last full measure of devotion. That we highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have, no, have a new birth of, or freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Thank you, Emma. Now the Kenton High School Band will play God Bless the USA.
Thank you very much. Now, for the reading of General Logan's order number 11 will be Dr. David Kinder from Ohio Northern University. Attention to orders. The 30th day of May, 1868 is dedicated, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion and whose bodies now lie in almost every village, city, and hamlet churchyard in the land. In this observance, no form or ceremony is prescribed, but posts and comrades will in their own way arrange such fitting services and testimonials of respect as circumstances may permit. We are organized, comrades, as our regulations tell us, for the purpose, among other things, of preserving and strengthening those kind and fraternal feelings which have bound together the soldiers, sailors, and Marines who united to suppress the late rebellion. What can aid more to assume, assure this result than by cherishing tenderly the memory of our heroic dead who made their breasts a barricade between our country and its foes? Their soldier lives were the uh, reveille of freedom to a race in chains, and their death a tattoo of rebellious tyranny in arms. We should guard their graves with sacred vigilance. All that the consecrated wealth and taste of the nation can add to their adornment and security is but a fitting tribute to the memory of her slain defenders. Let no wanton foot tre uh, tread rudely on such hallowed grounds. Let pleasant paths invite the coming and going of reverent visitors and fond mourners. Let no vandalism of avarice or neglect, no ravages of time, testify to the present or to the coming generation that we have forgotten as a people the cost of free and undivided republic. If other eyes grow dull and other hands slack and other hearts cold in the solemn trust ours, ours shall keep it uh, well as long as light and warmth of life remain in us. Let us then, at the time appointed, gather around their sacred remains and garland and passionless mounds above them with uh, choice, uh, choicest flowers of springtime. Let us raise above them the dear old flag they saved from dishonor. Let us in the solemn presence renew our uh, pledges to aid and assist those whom they have left among us as sacred charges upon the nation's gratitude the soldiers and sailors, widows and orphans. It is the purpose of the commander in chief to inaugurate this observance with a hope that it will be kept up for years from year to year, while a survivor of the war remains to honor the memory of departed comrades. He earnestly de desires the public press to call attention to his order and lend its friendly aid to, in bringing it to the no uh, notice of comrades in all parts of the country. In time, for simultaneous compliance therewith. Department commanders will use every effort to make this order effective by command of John A. Logan. Thank you, Dr. Kinder. <clears throat> and now the Kenton High School Band will play America the Beautiful.
Now I would like to introduce our guest speaker, uh, Ron Marvin, a Gulf War veteran, and his speech today will be on the anniversary, the 150th anniversary of those Logan's orders of the first uh, Memorial Day that took place at Arlington Cemetery, May 30th, 1868. Thank you. Let's try to read this a little shorter than everybody else. So, um, Ladies and gentlemen, students and children, elected officials, distinguished guests, and my fellow veterans, I want to welcome you to this solemn occasion. Since I moved back to Kenton uh, several years ago, I've had the distinct privilege to work with the Hardin County Veterans Service Commission on the placing of flowers and American flags uh, uh, the graves of Hardin County's veterans throughout the county. And most recently, that occurred right here in Grove Cemetery this week with the assistance of local volunteers and the Kenton High School JROTC cadets. I am pleased and proud to see a new generation take an interest in honoring Hardin County's previous service members. But we are gathered here today not to thank our veterans. While we appreciate the sentiment we have our own day in November, Armistice Day, better known as Veterans Day, which commemorates the end of World War I 100 years ago this year. Rather, we are gathered to honor and remember those brave men and women who gave their lives protecting and preserving the freedoms we enjoy today, as well as to remember those who came home with wounds, both visible and non-visible, who have since passed. This day is set aside specifically to remember our departed comrades in arms. Uh, to borrow a phrase from the Grand Army of the Republic, it is proper and fitting that we gather to remember our departed comrades. 150 years ago, General Logan's order called for strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country. This cemetery is the final resting place for veterans of nearly every major conflict our country has been involved in, extending as far back as the American Revolution, and they have been suitably decorated. As a member of the Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War, I have been involved in researching the history of these veterans and military monuments throughout Northwest Ohio. And due to these activities, I was honored to be asked to speak to you briefly about the history of Decoration Day better known as Memorial Day, which has its origins during the Civil War. Today's modern Memorial Day can be traced back to the 1860s and the end of the American Civil War. Numerous soldiers from both sides who fell during battle were hastily buried on the battlefield, sometimes in mass graves with little or no information about who resided in the graves. Others who died in military hospitals or following major battles such as Gettysburg or Stones River were buried in large military or small local cemeteries. Several communities are reported to have begun decorating the graves of the nearly 620,000 soldiers who died during the war. According to a Richmond Time Dispatch newspaper article in 1906, Warrington, Virginia was the location of the first Civil War soldier's grave ever to be decorated on June 3, 1861. The Savannah Republican reported that local women decorated Confederate soldiers' graves as early as 1862. The dedication of the Soldiers' National Cemetery at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania by President Abraham Lincoln on November 19, 1863 was one of the United States government's earliest efforts to honor its fallen soldiers. Historians in Bullsburg, Pennsylvania also claim that local ladies first decorated soldiers' graves in their cemetery on July 4, 1864. It was during the first year following the war that communities began earnestly remembering their honored dead. According to the Columbus Daily Sun, on April 25, 1866, a group of Southern ladies visited a cemetery near Columbus, Mississippi to decorate the graves of Confederate soldiers who had fallen during the Battle of Shiloh. Nearby graves of Union soldiers had been neglected because they were the enemy. Disturbed at the sight of these bare graves, the women placed some of their flowers on those graves as well. On May 5, 1866, Waterloo, New York reportedly celebrated its first Memorial Day with a community-wide event during which businesses closed and residents decorated the graves of soldiers with flowers and small American flags. 
This event continued as an annual event first on May 5th, 1867, and then moving to May 30th following General Logan's order in 1868. Although recent research has disputed this account, claiming the first event actually occurred on May 5th, 1868. The idea of Decoration Day is usually credited to, to Major General John Alexander Logan, the second ever Commander-in-Chief of the Grand Army of the Republic, which was a patriotic service organization comprised of former members of the Union Army. He issued what is popularly known as General Order Number 11 on May 5, 1868. This order dealt with the honoring of the fallen comrades and proclaimed that the 30th of May, 1868 is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in the defense of their country during the late rebellion and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land. Logan noted later that he chose that date of May 30th because it was not the anniversary of any particular battle or major skirmish. Many communities across the nation participated in these activities, often developing their own ceremonies and activities. During the first formal Decoration Day, approximately 5,000 volunteers helped decorate the graves of the more than 20,000 Union and Confederate soldiers buried at Arlington National Cemetery. This was following an address by former Union General and Ohio Congressman James A. Garfield. This commemoration has been observed for the last 150 years. In fact, Lieutenant General John Michael Murray returned to Washington, D.C. after Saturday's high school graduation so that he could participate in this annual event. In 1876, Kenton's Cantwell Post 97 of the Grand Army of the Republic purchased four plots in Grove Cemetery, where I'm standing. In this way, their comrades could be buried next to each other. Soon after, the members discussed erecting a permanent monument to those who had heeded the call of their nation. The first funds towards the monument were raised in 1830. Around 1895, members of the Cantwell Post 97 and the Cantwell Relief Post 138 of the Women's Relief Corps began raising funds in earnest. By 1899, nearly $1,000 had been raised and the monument was commissioned, featuring a marble base with a finely carved soldier of parade rest statue on top. The soldier's monument in front of us was unveiled to the public during a ceremony here on October 18, 1900. For over 100 years, Decoration Day or Memorial Day ceremonies have been focused around this monument. Several years later, an additional plot was purchased by the Cantwell Post for the burial of their fallen comrades and also indigent veterans of the war. This plot is located in Section 4C and includes the final resting place of soldiers who served with various state regiments, including from New York, Pennsylvania, and Illinois. From the late 1860s through the 1920s, members of the GAR posts across the nation, including the eight right here in our county, decorated the graves of the brothers in arms. As long as they were physically able to, Hardin County's Civil War veterans marched from the Hardin County Courthouse to Grove Cemetery to place flowers on the veterans' graves and then traveled to nearby cemeteries to do the same. Kenton newspapers during the 1890s routinely listed the Civil War veterans who had passed on during the previous year along with the cemetery they were interred in. These articles usually also contained the names of the area cemeteries in which the graves had already been decorated or were going to be visited and decorated on Memorial Day. <coughs> Through the years, numerous cities have claimed to be the birthplace of Decoration Day or Memorial Day. Although it is difficult to verify many of these claims, in addition to the cities I mentioned earlier who reportedly decorated graves during or immediately following the Civil War, Approximately 25 cities, including Carbondale, Illinois, and Macon, Georgia, have put forth claims uh, with varying degrees of documentation. Many states, both in the North and the South, began formally observing Memorial Day during the 1890s, with many declaring it a state holiday. There was no formal consensus on the date until the federal government became involved. Because of the continuous memorial activities begun in Waterloo, New York, on May of 1866, 100 years later, the House of Representatives passed House Concurrent Resolution 587 on May 17, 1966, and it was approved by the Senate on May 19, leading President Lyndon Baines Johnson to officially declare that Waterloo, New York was the official birthplace of Memorial Day. 
Two years later, Congress passed the Uniform Monday Holiday Act, declaring Memorial Day a national holiday to be celebrated on the last Monday in May, beginning in 1971. For the first 50 years, Decoration Day was primarily focused on Civil War veterans and to a lesser degree, Spanish-American War veterans. Following America's involvement in World War I, Memorial Day evolved to honor all of the nation's war veterans who have passed or died in battle regardless of era. This year's Memorial Day ceremony honors veterans buried in Hardin County cemeteries from the American Revolution to the present. To ensure that the sacrifices of America's fallen service men and women are never forgotten, in December 2000, Congress passed the National Moment of Remembrance Act, which encourages all Americans to pause wherever they are at at 3 p.m. local time on Memorial Day for a minute of silence to remember and honor those who have died in service to their nation. And I want to join you, you know, later this afternoon, wherever you're at, you know, to take a moment to, to thank, in your own way, the men and women who gave their lives to protect this great nation. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. And now to present the, the wreath for all war eras will be presented by the Grand Marshal Wayne Speck Rogers. I know, I'd like to say something. Okay. Sure, go right ahead. Yeah. All right. Need a hand? Please stand at attention while the JORTC raises the American flag. The benediction will be given by the Reverend Dr. Randall Forrester. 
Let us pray. The Lord our God, as we invoke your spirit upon these solemn moments, in this day of remembrance, we pray now for your benediction of peace to lead us forth. May your spirit cause our hearts to not be unmoved, but instead on a daily basis to tremble, to be grateful, to be filled with joy over what we've been given by your hand and through the sacrifice of our comrades, our fellow citizens who went forth when their nation called upon them. Let us be a grateful nation let us remain steadfast in the pursuit of liberty and truth. May we never cease until freedom is won for all people. We pray in this season for our nation, O oh God, when our rhetoric becomes so hostile towards one another, when we dehumanize people who stand on the other side of issues from us. Let us, the good citizens of this land, rise up let us achieve the greater nature of ourselves. Let us labor for the common good and let this nation be a beacon of hope to all nations. And may we honor those who have gone on before us for those who fought the good battle, who laid down their lives that we might be free. Let us use that freedom rightly and truly as you ordained it, O Father, through your Son, Jesus the Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. This concludes this portion of the memorial service. If you would please join us at the newest veteran circles to pay a final service of respect to our fallen heroes, which is right over there. The representation for all war eras will be presented by the Grand Mark and his aid. Attention while the JROTC raises the American flag. That's 1994 with a 21 gun salute. Memorial Day service. We'd very much like to thank those that came, and we would like to thank those that participated. And thank you very much on behalf of the Memorial Day Committee.